What up, though? It's your brother Jay Israel. Welcome back to my channel. And if it's your first time here, go ahead to subscribe notification bell. That way you don't miss out on the realest content on YouTube. You see the title, you see the thumbnail, so you know what's going on. That's right. Today is another gun review. And today we're talking about the Arsenal Sam 7. I'm going to go ahead and throw in some range footage, man. And then we're going to bring it right back to a tabletop review. All right, y'all, so like we said in the, uh, the beginning of the video, man, today we are talking about probably my favorite, most favorite gun that's in my arsenal, man, and it actually happens to be the arsenal. Uh, yeah, man, Arsenal Sam 7. This is my, this is my rifle, man. This is my go-to AK rifle right here, man. Uh, first things first, weapon, it is empty, nothing is in the gun and it's an empty mag there so got that all knocked away yeah man arsenal sam 7 man like i said uh when it comes to you know the little collection of guns that i do own i i gotta say that this is probably my most favorite gun uh not only to shoot man but just really just my most favorite gun to have um let's go ahead and dive right into you know, like I said, the review, first things first. So, uh, like I said, Arsenal Sam 7. Um, you know it's packing some some pretty hefty firepower, man. Like I like to say on this channel, it's got that that pure bang. You know what I'm saying? Nothing but uh, uh, very damaging and uh, powerful, you know, powerful piece of ammo. 762 by 39, man. Uh, when you're talking about shooting through cars, you're talking about shooting through houses, through brick. You know, this is this is this is one of those weapons right here, man. That you really got to be cautious on. You know, whatever your philosophy of use is going to be for it. But we'll get more more into that in just a little bit. Uh, so as far as the uh, the size of this gun, man, I measured it uh, measured it out to be at um, 38 inches. 38 inches with the uh, now this is the uh, Sam 7 SF, so it does have the side folder here. Um, so 38 inches with the stock all the way out, 28 inches with it shortened like that. Just, just ferocious. I like, I like the fact that it is a side folder, man. Uh, just to kind of like, I like, I say in a lot of uh, my gun reviews, especially when it comes to long guns. I'm more of a uh, of a short gun type of guy. Um, you know, I, I kind of, I, for the most part, I like to, I like to have those shorter guns. I just feel like it's better. For you know, moving around the house or whatever it is that your situation might be, uh, I feel like you know having uh, having you know shorter guns to be able to move around is a little bit better. So, you know, with this gun, I think that that kind of adds to why I like it so much is the fact that you know it has a side folder, man. Um, I have I already got a, a Galil Ace pistol, so as far as like a car gun, 
I'm, 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 I'm gonna use that. But you know, in the world without rule of law, you could uh, possibly use this as a truck gun or, or something like that. You know, just it's kind of it's kind of still long in the front, man. But you know that that to be able to you know to close out that that uh that stock there, you know, is not that bad. But like I say, you know, as far as the um, as far as uh the size go, you know, this is uh it's about 38 inches fully extended. Um, and then as far as the weight go, uh, I was able to uh, weigh it on the um I was able to weigh it, man. I got it. To, I seen it was probably about it's around about nine pounds, man, nine point two, you know, give or take. Um you know, for a lot of people, some people that might be a little bit too heavy of a gun, especially if you're talking about uh, SHTF. Um, you know, this might be a little bit more, you know, too much heft of a gun for some folks. So as far as accuracy go, um, as y'all know, I personally, I train for realistic situations that I feel like I'll probably have to deal with, man. So when it comes to like 100 yards, 200 yards and all that kind of stuff, shooting some, shooting at somebody two football fields away, man, I just, I don't realistically feel like I'm going to have to deal with that type of situation. Uh, for me at that point, it's fight or flight. You know, if I, if I got to deal with a, a threat two, you know, two football fields away, I, you know, if, if you're smart enough, you should be able to maneuver your way and just get up out the situation and just get ghosts, man. Unless you defending your home or something like that, or you defending whatever, you know, you got going on, you know, then I can see, see, you know, differences, but, you know, even at two football, you know, fields away, you know, this is, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure it probably can hit out at them distances. I personally haven't shot at them distances because I don't, I just don't feel like I'm going to ever deal with that. But as far as the accuracy go, man, um, and short ranges, you know, you're talking about 20, 25 yards. Let's just say I'm, I'm even throw a good 50. Let's just say half a football field, 50 yards out, man. I feel like you going to be able to take care of whatever it is your problem is uh, 50 yards out. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to throw in some clips, man, um, some of the uh, clips as, you know, throughout the video. But, you know, for me, uh, today I did testing. I did testing at 20 yards out. Um, and I feel like I had some pretty, pretty good groupings, man. Uh, so, like I said, I'm going to throw some clips in, but, you know, just to show these off too. So, here's some, here's the, uh, here's the, uh, you know, some of the targets um you know 20 yards out now this this particular target all of these i shot uh standing up and the next one i show um were targets that were i was sitting down at but uh if i can remember i believe this was shot with wolf uh i believe this was red army standard and uh uh tula tulamo um and then same with the two bottoms wolf and red army standard but yeah, man. Um, I feel like you know I had some pretty decent groupings. Uh, like I said, these were 20 yards out. Now this here was actually with some Tula, and you know that's a pretty that's a pretty good group in there. You know, a lot of shot. You know, like they say, I think it's called one MOA or MOA or whatever. You know, these are some pretty good groupings, especially once the barrel started to heat up a little bit more. Um, you probably can't tell it too much you know we're here but once that barrel started heating up a little bit more and um and i and i decided to sit down and get some shots sitting once that barrel started to heat up um it still performed pretty well my group is did so let me just show y'all some of these some pretty good groupers in my opinion like i said all of these were shot 20 yards out uh, this particular target was, um, like I said, I was shooting these sitting down. But those are some pretty tight groups, in my, you know, in my opinion. Like I said, I'm also throwing in more clips. You know. But yeah, as far as accuracy go, in my opinion, like I said, 20, 25 yards out, I'm feeling confident even at 50 yards. Uh, I'm feeling, you know, this this gun is going to get the, get the job done, man. Well, you know, if you got a threat or whatever in those distances, I feel like you should be good to go. Um, but, you know, if you're looking for 100 yards, 200 yards and all that kind of stuff, all that kind of stuff, I can't, you know, I'm, I, I can't give you that particular feedback at this time. Y'all just stay tuned, though, man. Uh, the summer's coming up, so... 
Um, I do plan on hitting a few different outdoor ranges, man, so I can, you know, possibly get some more longer distances and things like that. So as far as like the ergonomics of the gun, you know, the trigger, the sights, the control, uh, me, I'm a, I, I, I think, I think it's safe to say I'm an AK type of guy. I'm not the biggest fan of AR-15s. Uh, I, I own a couple of them, and uh, I don't know. Me personally, I like the AK platform. I just feel like for me, I can easily maneuver. Uh, maneuver a little bit better with the AK, you know, boot, racket, you know, and then I just, you know, that's a little bit more simple for me. ARs, you know, you got to deal with the hand guard band up here, so, but with this, you know, I can just boot, boot, you know, boot, boot, just two flip sides, and I just kind of, you know, owning this gun for some, some time, um, you know, that's just kind of come with practice and stuff like that. You know, I, I've owned, like I said, I own AR-15s too, but uh, me personally, I, I, I like the controls of using the AK-47, man. It's just, you know, for me, simplicity is better. You know, very, you know, in my opinion, I prefer simple. You know, don't don't give me something too complicated. I got to push three, four, five, six buttons, and then that's that's how you activate the trigger. And I'm like, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't like to deal with that kind of stuff, man. Just keep it simple. Uh, with the AK man, even with the um, even with the safety, you know the safety just, you know, just slide it up, boop, 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 boop. And if you are a fan of AR-15s, it also has a thumb safety here. So, boop, 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 boop. So, very, very simple gun to use. Um, I don't typically had issues with like you know the mag release or nothing like that or um you know magazines or anything like that i don't i don't typically have any issues with or i haven't had any issues i should say with um uh, with any of the controls of the gun now i will say here um on my uh so where the side folder is the little pin that's used in it um it does tend to pop out as you can see that little pin that's sticking up at the top there, right here. So that little pin right there is not supposed to be sticking up. So from time to time, I just gotta kind of press it down with my finger. That's like the only like loose, loose thing that I've seen. So I just, I just popped that right back in. But yeah, um, you know, like I say, even with you know using a side folder, you just you know, it's just that simple. So now, as far as accessories go, um, you can definitely you know trick this gun out with you know your own type of accessories. If you're looking to swap out the handguard, if you're looking to swap out uh, the, the grips to it, the bust stop, uh, the muzzle brake, you know, it's pretty much nearly nearly uh, modular. And I know a lot of people. Uh, prefer AR-15s. They said that the AR-15s is, is more modular and you can do more things and that that may be the case man That may be the case, but for average guy like me, you know with without a, a, a military background or anything like that, you know uh, You know for the average person that's just on the street that that, that had, didn't grow up with guns in a household and stuff like that You know for me it's just I, I, I prefer to keep my gun stock and I say that all the time I, I like to have a gun stock when I purchase a gun from you know from the store from the manufacturer I prefer to you know ha let it have everything that I know exactly I want to add to it or I, that I absolutely want to have on there um, And that's you know really specifically why I had to go with this particular model You know I didn't want to have to deal with swapping out the handguard here because as you can see I got accessories on it um, got me a uh, got me a vert got me a four grip here. I got a flashlight there. Pretty bright light. But yeah, um, I didn't want to I didn't want to have to deal with like I said swapping out the handguard and stuff like that. So this model actually when I purchased it uh, straight from the factory, it came with this handguard on here. Um, and I think I even mentioned it uh, when I did my Galil, my Galil video, I was talking about I wanted to have the Arsenal Sam 7K, the pistol version of this gun. Um, and even with that one, they offered, they had a model that came with the hand, uh, with the Picatinny rail on the handguard, which was the exact model I wanted to have. Like I said, me personally, I don't, I don't get too often to changing the internals of the guns and stuff like that. I didn't grow up, you know, I didn't grow up with firearms in the house. I'm not a gunsmith. I don't, I don't know too much about 
the making and the building of guns like that. So my mindset is, you know, I prefer to keep my gun stocked. So if something go wrong, I can send it back to the manufacturer and let them fix it, fix whatever the issue is. I don't want to be, you know, at home trying to fix the issue. And at the same time, you know, even though this gun is modular, um, you know, for 15, 18, you know, 15, 18, 1500 dollars plus. You know, right like I said, right now it's going about eighteen. But I purchased about I got this gun for about fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. But even at that price, man, you know, you don't really want to. Who wants to, you know, spend that much money and then have to spend even more money uh, upgrading and, and stuff like that? You know, um, I know a lot of people they 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 swap out the triggers, man. Uh, I believe they go for like a, I think it's called an Apex trigger, stuff like that. I mean, I I, I, I own. I, I think I had some pretty good, you know trigger time with this gun uh am i looking to just be you know go full full make this thing a semi shoe like a full auto not necessarily um but yeah it's like i said as far as accessories go man it's definitely a ton of different accessories different aftermarket parts you can swap out on here now with this particular uh ak being a milled receiver you might have to find more specific like more uh like dedicated specific uh aftermarket parts that can go for this because I, I figure a lot of aftermarket parts uh work a little bit better with stamp receivers so this is a mill receiver and you have to keep that in consideration um when, you know whenever you purchase anything for it like even with you know with the um even with the optics mount that i have here uh, i i i made sure i purchased the arsenal brand optics mount i didn't want to uh as you can see got the arsenal logo art there so i didn't want to i didn't want to get like a you know a different aftermarket type of um i didn't want to get like an aftermarket you know optics mount um you know for this particular gun and even with like majority of my guns when i like when i really get off into building my guns up uh because this is probably like my most built gun with like accessories and attachments all on it it's probably like one of my most built ones uh, but when I get off into like even with the other guns I own with the pistols and all that kind of stuff I'm gonna try to keep everything like, you know manufacturer based. I don't like to do too much mixing of the, of the manufacturers I don't you know, I, I, I understand the um, I understand the reason why people will want to go and put like, you know, all mag pool furniture on this thing You know, it's a little bit lightweight and this that and third, but you know me, like I said, I just I, I prefer to keep my stuff, you know, all you know, all as one. I don't want to be having a million different, you know, man or different brands of stuff on on, on, the, on the gun. Like it's you know, like if, if that's the case, I, I just go the AR-15 route. You know, if I'm looking for something I can build up and personalize and all that, I just go with the AR-15. You know, I can I, I I can you know pick my ammo, I can pick my trigger, I can do the internals and all that kind of stuff. I can pick the barrel. If I want to get off into that, like I said, I just go to the AR-15 platform. But you know, as far as this particular weapon on, on why I purchased it, um, and when I purchased it, you know, I, I wanted to keep everything stock based. You know, I wasn't I really wasn't looking into changing it. Like I said, the triggers and the internals and all that. Uh, if I have an issue. I prefer to send it to the manufacturer and let them deal with it. So I uh, mentioned pricing a few times in this video already, but yeah, so like I said, when I purchased this weapon, uh, if I remember, I, um, I tried to pull up like my old receipt or whatever uh, for this gun. Um, but when I purchased it, I believe, man, I want to say it was about $1,600. I want to say it was about $1,600. And this was, this was probably like four, four-ish years ago, you know, about four years ago when I uh, when I purchased this one. Uh, right now, I did, like I said, I did check Gun Broker. Right now, I'm looking at pricing, you know, buy it right now, I'm pricing, you're looking at about a good $1,800 and up. Um, a good $1,800 and up. So, as far as value go, uh, you know, to a lot of people, $1,800 is a lot of money. Shoot, for me, $1,800, $1,600 was a lot of money when I purchased it. But, you know, you got to just really keep in, you know, keep in mind, set the purposes on why you want to have this particular weapon. Now, I will say this, even though this gun is going for $1,800 and up right now, and if you're lucky, you might be able to find an auction for it, and you might be able to get it for $1,400 or $1,500. You know, check out gunbroker.com. But this is my mindset, you know, because I was watching, uh, I was watching nothing fancy. He did a uh, he did a review on this uh, on this gun some time ago, and you know he really, you know 
talk talk down on the weapon as far as the pricing go you know when you got so many other options at 800 700 did, but the thing I, I you know the, i would say this the reason i'm gonna name the title of this of uh of this video this being the best ak to purchase on the market in today's time in 2022 the reason i'm gonna say that is because you got all these other low budget ak's right that's going for a thousand dollars and up you know you got your century arms you got your Zastavas, you got you know all these other all these other budget you know not necessarily budget but i would say more so uh maybe entry level or even maybe um average level if you want to say it that way because i don't think there's nothing wrong with century arms or Zastavas. uh I, you know i plan on having a few of those in my arsenal but my thing is the pricing on them are jacked up at this time. So I, I'm, I'm curious to hear what like nothing fancy would have to say. You know, yeah, this gun is $1,800, but if you're gonna be purchasing, you know, a 1200, you know, if you're gonna spend $1,200 on the AK that, you know, not too long ago was going for $600, $700, you gotta really ask yourself, man, you know, it, are you feeling, are, would you feel, uh pimped out of your money if you spent you know 12 1300 on a, on a 600 dollar gun or would you feel pimped out of your money spending 1800 dollars on a 1600 dollar gun because like i said the prices haven't really you know uh uh increased too much with these guns throughout this whole pandemic thing so i mean you get you get a few of them here and there i mean I, i've seen these things go for about three thousand shooting when i seen them prices i even considered throwing mines on gun broker but um but yeah i mean really think about that you know you got like i said average level ak's or average you know entry level ak's and stuff that's going for you know maybe if you're lucky you might find it for a thousand but you know realistically you're talking 1100 you know at, at at least um and they and they go up from there too i mean i remember in the height of this whole pandemic stuff like you know when uh when the uh, ammo crisis and the ammo shortages and all that stuff was going on man ak i seen century arms ak's at pawn stores going for about two thousand dollars so you know ask yourself you know in, in 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 today's time right now at current pricing you know would you would you prefer to spend an extra couple few hundred dollars you know five hundred dollars and you got a guaranteed reliable durable you know, heavy duty built, long lasting. Would you prefer to spend that eighteen hundred dollars or spend twelve, thirteen hundred, eleven, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, man, on a gun, on an AK that might not last or might not be as durable or you know might not have or or have uh, more more issues, reliability issues, whatever it may be, uh, compared to the you know compared to the arsenal. Just really keep that in mind. Like I was saying though, durability, reliability. You know, this particular uh, AK is a, is a mill receiver. You know, that pretty much mean um, they took a, a, a whole block of steel and they milled out the receiver. They, they, they you know, hammered it down, you know, did what they had to do as far as the internals. And, 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 and they made this, you know, this particular, this whole section here, this is all one piece of metal. When you're talking about stand receivers, you're talking about AKs that, you know, a few of these parts, the internals or the even externals, you know, they, they separated pieces. They, you know, they have to be drilled together. They got to have, you know, uh, uh, you know, they, they got to be they got to be held together with, with nails and, and not nail, but screws and all that kind of stuff. That's really what you're talking about with the differences with with stamped, and, you know, stamped and mill. So this is, you know, durability and reliability. This gun, this weapon was made for durability. This made this this weapon was, was was made for reliability. And don't get me wrong. Like I said, I'm I'm confident. I'm I will feel more comfortable or and confident with any AK in my arsenal if I didn't have none. I, I would feel comfortable with it. You know, and that's just like I said. Me, I'm an AK type of guy. I like the reliability. I like the simplicity um, of the AK-47. And a lot of people will tell you the same thing about it. Um, you know, but you know, like I said, when it comes to that reliability and durability, you know, this right here, you can bury any AK in in, in, in the ground and it more than likely work. But if you want to just better your chances, you might want to bury it in the ground for about five years. You might want to bury it for ten years. Who who knows? This is one of those weapons right here that you can do that with. 
um, and have no issues. It's gonna shake. It's gonna knock the dust off of it. You know, you spray a little uh, 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 brake oil, motor oil, or something like that up in here, and you good. You know, cleaning it. You really ain't gotta clean it. You know, no AK, especially not no AK like this. You really don't have to clean them. Me, I prefer to shoot them, clean them, shoot them, clean them. That's what I do. But if I wanted to, man, I, I can throw thousands of rounds in this thing. I feel confident that I can throw thousands of rounds through this gun. Um, and not have no issues. Um, reliability. So when it comes to like, like I said, reliability is this weapon for the most part. It has been reliable for me. I will throw this in there, you know, just because I'm being completely 100% honest. The only time I had an issue with this gun, and it was only one time that I can actually recall. Um, and it was an ammo issue. It wasn't nothing with the gun or nothing like that. But I had light primer strikes using soft point uh two ammo soft point two ammo that's what i had issues with uh light primer strikes um you know pretty much the weapon it didn't fire a couple of times i had to you know re re uh re throw the ammo back in there and stuff like that but that was the only time i can recall um through the like i said fat past four or five years of me owning this weapon that's the only time i can recall i had a uh issue with the gun was with well, like i said that that specific ammo and that's why in today's video uh, I, I made sure i used it you know different uh brands i use a little bit of wolf i use a little bit of tula and i also use a little bit of rest uh red army standard but yeah man that's like the only time that i can really recall an issue with this gun other than that um other than that, I don't I don't believe I had no had no issues. I haven't had any issues with this gun. None none whatsoever. Um always been reliable, always ran flawless. You know, I never like I said, never had an issue, never had a reason to want to send it to uh to Arsenal Inc., you know, and have them check it out or whatever. Never had any kind of problems like that. As far as track record goes, so honestly, besides nothing fancy, uh and what he you know, and, and nothing fancy, even though he never, he never, never said anything as far as, like I said, the reliability and all that. It was just more so in the weight uh, and the pricing, which I can understand, you know, compared to other other models and other firearms out there. But as far as the track record go, besides you know, besides his opinion on it, everybody I've seen talk about this, you know, talk about this gun and say it's a great gun. You know, if not, it's one of the, if not the best, one of the best, at least top three AKs that's on the market. That's what I always hear about this particular weapon. And that was the reason why I purchased this weapon. Um, when I was initially in the market for AKs, man, it was the Arsenal Sam 7, it was a Glil Ace pistol, uh, and it was a Zestava z -Pap. Those were like, you know, like three of the ones I, I continuously to hear uh, that's still actively um that's still actively on the market you know i mean i know you got like the uh sgls and slrs and you know you got you know century arms wasp for tens and all that kind of stuff i hear wasp for tens is actually pretty good ak too um but like it's like i said as far as like the best as far as the top as far as the number one choice uh you know for the most part arsenal is what a lot of people are are, are naming you know like i said even if it's not the number one it's, it's it definitely in the top three slot you know for for ak's on the market um you know and in, in, in my opinion it's a very great ak uh it's hard for me to say i i can't really give i can't really compare it to too many other ak's because i mean i've shot i've shot you know sentry arms i've shot shot uh my galil ace pistol so it's I, I, it, it, I, it's hard for me to give an opinion on you know how you know how does it line up against other weapons, you know, if I'm talking about the Glil Ace pistol, um, if I'm being honest, I think the Glil Ace pistol might shoot a it might shoot a little bit better. I think like the Ace pistol seems a little bit more smoother, in my opinion, than than the Arsenal does. Uh, but overall, they shoot about the same though. They shoot about the same. They both accurate. They're both durable, um, and they both eat, you know, eat anything, uh, you know, eat, eat, eat all kinds of AK ammo. I didn't mention too much about the magazines, but even with magazines, this weapon runs pretty good with magazines. Uh, mag pool, steel case ammo, or steel case mags. Uh, I think I might have, I think I might have a couple of tap codes somewhere um, that, you know, they, they have fitment issues with it, and, and I think I probably only bought tap code like 
like probably one or two magazines possibly but uh for the majority of magazines they they run pretty cool like i said still still uh magazines mag pools uh, i'm sure uh, i mean i got like an arsenal uh bulgarian magazine always ran floss uh, flawless with the gun so magazines uh and, and fitment with magazines for the most part they're pretty well if i'm not mistaken uh, like i said i think the top coat it might uh it might not fit too well in here um, I know it didn't fit too well in the Galil for sure, but I don't think the Tapco fit it uh, fit too well in this one. If uh, if I remember, if I can go, go look through my stash and I find it, um, then I throw in some extra clip in here. Uh, if not, we uh, just take my word for it if you want to. All right. So last but not least, man, let's talk about philosophy of use, man. What would be the purpose? What would be some good reasons to have this particular weapon? Um. Home defense? Sure, you can use this as a home defense. I wouldn't recommend it though. You know, like I mentioned earlier, as far as the ammo go, man, 762 by 39 um, is, is, a, is a dangerous round. You know, it's a very dangerous round. Now, I, I, I personally, when I'm riding around the Challenger, I keep the, I keep the Galil Ace pistol on me. Um, but you know, honestly, you know, I pray that I never ever have to pull that thing out on somebody because my mindset, you know, like I said, this thing is shooting through cars, this thing is shooting through houses. You know, I'm I'm from you know one of the worst neighborhoods in Detroit. Um, and it's been plenty of times, man. It might be a shooting three, four blocks away, and you got bullets flying through your house. Yeah, and and, and the shooting occurred three, four, five blocks away. Like that's that's the thing about it you know that's the thing about the 762 by 39 it's a very great round it's gonna get the job done uh but depending on the situation you might not want to pull it out so as far as home defense you know especially if you got kids in the house or if you in the neighborhood man um and it's a lot of kids around keep that keep that in mindset if you if you told the ak-47 for home defense keep that in mindset man you don't want to be responsible for little cindy lou across the street catching catching uh 762 you don't want cindy lou to catch 762 keep that in mindset so as far as home defense i probably i, I probably personally wouldn't use it as a home defense weapon uh i mean don't get me wrong i keep it keep it around if i ever you know have to but I, i'm gonna go shotgun or something like that first or 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 one of my handguns you know before i pick up probably a, you know pick up the ak-47 uh truck gun car gun um if you can legally carry one of these in your car you know have at it you know have at it but like i said just keep in mind you know if you out in a public place man you at a, a gas station in in in, in a in a pretty um in a, in a pretty you know crowded neighborhood and somebody try you you pull this thing out man you take the risk of really take you know taking taking out some damage uh or you know you know possibly you know shooting at somebody killing somebody whatever that you didn't ever intend to kill uh you know for me honestly the a this particular you know this particular ak like i said i, I do keep my galil ace pistol in the, in the car so you know if i if i have to use it i have to use it but i pray i never have to use it and you know unless it's a, you know unless it's shtf which is which is more than likely and probably the, the main reason that I'm going to use this particular weapon. You know, if things go 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 bad in America, uh, you know, you got that situation with Russia and Ukraine and all that going on. Unless something like that pop off over here, I'm I'm grabbing this. You know, this is this is what I'm gonna keep on me. Um you know, like I said, you know, as far as accuracy go, I know it's an accurate gun. So if you're close enough, you, that that is curtains for you. Uh, I'm 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 sure it can probably do something effective. You know, if, you know, 100 yards out, 200 yards out. Uh, but either way, you know, shit hit the fan. This is this is gonna be my go-to weapon. You know, I'm I'm gonna throw the Galil Ace pistol in wifey hand, and I'm picking this up, and we gonna run and gun it, and and, and keep it moving. Um, that's really like like really the the main main reason that, that i have this weapon uh it's really shtf i mean of course you can use it as a range gun if you're looking to do some plinking and you know stuff like that it's, a, it's gonna be a fun gun for sure uh but me i don't shoot this gun like that you know i try to keep you know i i've probably put about a good 
at least a thousand rounds in the past few years. I probably put a good about a thousand. Might be anywhere from might be anywhere from a thousand to two thousand rounds that I've thrown through this gun. So yeah, it's going to definitely make for a, a reliable range weapon if that's what you're looking for. Um, but not for me. Uh, maybe you want a collector piece, man. If you're looking for a collector's AK, if you ain't talking about a Kalishkinov, you know this arsenal is not a bad one to have in your arsenal. I just like how it's called the art. This is the arsenal, man. But yeah, man. You know, this is not a bad weapon to have in your uh, in your gun collection. Not a bad weapon to have in your gun collection, especially if you don't shoot it. Like I said, man. Uh, the market when you know the whole pandemic hit and everybody was going, you know, gun gun hole crazy. I, you know, I could have made some good pro. I could have you know gotten two two of these for the price that I paid for the one. You know, I've seen some of these go for about three thousand, thirty five hundred. And uh, on average, I'm seeing them go for, you know, right now, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm seeing them go for about $1,800, but you get a few a few people here, $2,000, $2,500, you know, it just kind of depends. But yeah, man, that's uh, that's going to pretty much wrap up this video, man. I appreciate it if you watched it all the way through. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Tell me, you know, what are your thoughts on, you know, the Arsenal Sam 7 if you own one or if you shot one before. You know what are what are some some different options that you will put up against the Arsenal Sam Seven? You know I'm believing that this is uh, according to this track record. Tor according to his track record, you know this is more than likely top top three AKs in the world right now. You know it's on the market. You know y'all comment down below and tell me. You know let me know what what are some uh, you know what, what are your thoughts on it? You know if it's good if it's bad. Whatever it may be. But like I said, that's going to pretty much wrap this video up. Appreciate it if you watched it all the way through. And as always, keep it real with God and keep it real with yourself. Shalom.